Over the coming three months, we recommend that Oranga Tamariki undertakes a program of engagement with Māori collectives and communities to understand what their ideas for the change they want to lead are and what resourcing and support they need to achieve it. We offer our support for this process. Under this overarching first recommendation, we stress that A, adequate resources and authority must be shared equitably with Māori. B, many of the services and support for Tamariki and their whānau currently delivered by Wuranga Tamariki can, over time, be provided by Māori and community groups. And C, the primary role for Oranga Tamariki social workers can then be to respond to emergency situations and navigate Tamariki and Fano to immediate help in order to secure their safety and protection. Moreover, the evidence is clear that the needs of Tamariki, Māori and Fano are not well served by the current system. Coming into contact with the current care and protection system, if only briefly, can reinforce and cause further damage to already vulnerable and hurt Tamariki and their Fano. The primary solution is to prevent the need for so many Tamariki and Fano to come to state attention, and for those that do, that the time they are engaged with the system is as short as possible, while their Fano are supported to heal so that they can safely take back the care of their Tamariki. Investment must be geared towards that prevention focus and to the system recalibration needed to enable it. We believe Oranga Tamariki needs ongoing help and guidance to support its shift to providing the most effective state care and protection system possible, but are firmly of the view that Oranga Tamariki is not the ultimate point. The ultimate point must be to prevent harm from occurring in the first place. We think it is obvious that Māori collectives and communities are best placed to lead this work. Our second recommendation, overarching recommendation that is, is to in order to work collaboratively with Māori, community organisations and other government agencies, the purpose of Oranga Tamariki must be clarified. This includes clarifying who Oranga Tamariki primarily exists to serve, what areas of service delivery and support are for Māori and community to lead, and where the responsibility of other government agencies must be to support improved outcomes for Tamariki and Fano. We make these recommendations that it is clear to us that Oranga Tamariki social workers are under significant pressure. This is compounded by a lack of strong professional leadership and development, absence of consistent and timely induction across the organisation, and weak professional structures and systems. The social work voice within Oranga Tamariki needs strengthening as professional practice views, opinions and experiences are missing at many levels within the organisation, including at its leadership group. Oranga Tamariki lacks strategic direction and is not visionary. It is self-centred and constantly looks to itself for answers. Its current systems are weak, disconnected and unfit for the population of Tamariki it serves, and there is no strategy to partner with Māori and the community. It is an agency that is vulnerable to be blown off course by the headwinds it inevitably encounters over time. We also, however, want to acknowledge, though, that Oranga Tamariki's work is hard. Social workers are expected to manage ambiguity, uncertainty, and to make judgments that no other agency or profession is called upon to make, within a system that requires them to constantly reassess priorities. We observe also that Oranga Tamariki social workers are isolated and need other agencies to work with them more proactively in order to address, address the risk of harm to Tamariki and their whānau. To help relieve these pressures, we recommend that in addition to recentering itself around professional social work, a workforce development plan is needed. This should recognise the core role of Oranga Tamariki social workers and grow the broader supporting social work sector, workforce inside and outside Oranga Tamariki. This should be developed and progressed as a priority. Minister, our final recommendation. A national Oranga Tamariki Governance Board should be established to oversee the diversity and depth of changes needed to guide and support Oranga Tamariki through the challenges they will inevitably face over time. This is necessary so that investment is sustained and focused on achieving improved outcomes for Tamariki and their whānau, with wider benefits for communities and the nation. The Governance Board will have responsibility for guiding Oranga Tamariki to devolve authority and resources to Māori collectives and community groups. It should ensure they are supported to lead prevention and the other programs and services currently provided by Oranga Tamariki that communities are best placed to provide for Tamariki and their whānau. We know Oranga Tamariki has not lived up to its name. 
uplifts social workers under pressure, a lack of training, and just recently care and protection residents is displaying unacceptable behaviour. I asked for this job and I knew the challenges I would face and those challenges are real. But I also knew that while difficult, this mahi was perhaps the most important I will ever do. From the outset, I set out my expectations for Oranga Tamariki. I was committed to fixing the child care and protection system and ensuring that Oranga Tamariki was the organisation that people trust and go to for help. I want it to have a laser-like focus on the needs of our children. I expect Oranga Tamariki to be that an enabler that allows the regions to decide what is right for their particular area, to empower communities and Māori to help children and their families in a way that suits them and not just Wellington. This focus, this vision for Oranga Tamariki is not new, not to frontline workers, communities, children in care or to Māori, not even to politicians from political parties different to my own. Paula Bennett, a previous National Minister responsible for the care and protection of children, expressed the same desires for Oranga Tamariki in her Mātangireya interview with Mikey Sherman earlier this year. She knew we needed to devolve, she believed in the same vision, and she said she spent a frustrating five years trying to get us there. While there's always been a change programme to try and turn Oranga Tamariki around, we have never gone far enough. Now it is our turn. At the beginning of this year, I put in place my independent uh, ministerial advisory board of Matthew, Dame Nader, Sir Mark Solomon and Shannon Parkura, and I tasked them with the job of looking into three main areas. Relationships with families in Māori, professional practice of social workers and organisational culture. What I needed from them was to start building a pathway forward, and I knew they wouldn't go easy on the system, after all, these were some of the voices who had been the most vocal uh, critics of Oranga Tamariki. But that was what we needed. We needed them to gather information, ask the hard questions, and outline a new direction for Oranga Tamariki, one that would keep our children safe. During their work, they took the time to listen to the concerns, the heartbreak, the total frustration from Fano, and social workers from entire communities. They had to hear the worst to build a vision of what better looked like and start to craft a pathway forward in how we would get there. Their report and the notes from their meetings across the country are confronting. The board did not hold back exactly what I asked of them and they laid it on the line, the whole truth. So much so that I took their words with me to the cabinet table the cabinet paper that was written to put in place the changes we are announcing today was littered with the words, thoughts and opinions of the board and those they spoke to as well as being, oh, sorry, as well as being informed by the Waitangi Tribunal findings in its report here, Pā Harakeke. As the Minister of Children, I and every single one of my cabinet colleagues accept this report in its entirety. Like everyone here today, we all know we have to do something differently as the current approach is not working. As Matt has already outlined, in total, the Ministerial Advisory Board has made three overarching recommendations. Collective Māori and community authority and responsibility must be strengthened and resourced to lead pre prevention of harm to tamariki and their whānau. Secondly, the purpose of Oranga Tamariki must be clarified. This includes who Oranga Tamariki primarily exists to serve. And thirdly, a process to establish a national Oranga Tamariki Governance Board should be designed over the coming year with the Oranga Tamariki Governance Board to be in place by the end of 2022. You will see change. As well as, 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 well as the recommendations in the report, as the Minister, I have already taken further steps to make improve, improvements to Oranga Tamariki. Uh, alongside the Oranga Tamariki Chief Executive, we have announced that we will close our current residential care and protection homes and replace our residential care and protection homes with smaller purpose-built homes to enable care for high complex needs. Another area of particular concern for me is the way Oranga Tamariki uses Section 78 orders to uplift children. 
to uplift the child from their family should be the last resort in any situation. I think there needs to be more clarity provided in this area. So I want to set a clear direction to only use Section 78 without notice orders for children when there is clear evidence after solid engagement or attempts at engagement with whānau, which leads to no workable safety plan being put in place. Our social workers can do this, and I am focused on supporting them and the community to work together on this. I am not so naive, though, to think that we may, never, uh, may not ever have to uplift a child from a dangerous situation. But if we do, if we have to, if we must, then I want to make sure that we do so in a respectful manner, that we limit the trauma we cause families and babies, that we have done everything up to that point to keep the whānau and the baby safe together. Because once we use that power, once we take that action, the trauma cannot be undone. So I want us to use it only when it is absolutely necessary and not just because things get a bit tough. Like I mentioned in the beginning, yes, mistakes have been made. Yes, we need to change. The system is broken, but many people that work inside the system are not. They care for the children they protect and I truly value the work they do. Many go above and beyond what the system allows to support our children that need it the most. They believe, as I do, that our care and protection agency are the parents of children who can't be with their own parents, and we must be the best example of what good parents are. But we cannot do this alone. Families support one another and communities look out for each other. That is what this is about. As a whānau, we need to work together, agencies, iwi, NGOs and the community looking after children as our own whānau. To care for children when no one else can is a privilege, a responsibility no one should take lightly, not me as the minister, not this government, not the department. Everything we do, every action we take needs to be in the best interest of the child we have the privilege to care for. And the system needs to reflect, reflect that. The system needs to encourage it. This isn't small change. This is a fundamental rethink. It will require Oranga Tamariki staff to step up, to change the way they think and to do better, and they will be supported to do that. But I believe that together we can change the system. We can better care for, for and protect our children, and if we get it right at the end of this all, we will finally live up to the name that Dame Nader Glavish gifted us, that is Oranga Tamariki. To the board, um, Matt, Dame Nader, Sir Mark and Shannon, thank you. Thank you for all the work you have done and all you will do. I want you all to know how important your advice has been to me, how I appreciate the commitment you have shown to our Tamariki, and I want to congratulate you on a brave and bold report that puts our children and their well-being at its very core. Together, we can make change. As a whānau, we are all here for the same thing to protect our children. 